Welcome back. I've got a review video today and we're going to be reviewing these. These are the Aula One Night Vision Binoculars from Wildgarda. Wildgarda got in touch and asked if I'd be interested in having a look at the product, getting it out in the field, testing it and doing a review. Now as you know I'll only review products that I can get for free and I can do an open and honest review on. If I've got to buy the product and then get a refund on a successful and positive review, I'm not interested in that. If I get a product, I'll be honest with the review and I'll be honest with what I find. Now these are awesome. I've used night vision binoculars in the past. I think the one that I had, I owned previously was the Night Fox NV100, but these absolutely smash the Night Fox. Now, what you'll notice first of all, when you look at the website, the Wildgarda website, which is linked just down there in the description, if you check that out, these are absolutely fantastic spec. We're looking at 20 times optical zoom, four times digital zoom. We've got a 68 degree angle of view. It's 850 nanometer infrared with a five watt LED illuminator. It can punch that infrared 500 meters downstream. And I'll tell you what, it lights everything up. I've had them out on the farm, around the cattle farm. I've got some nighttime footage. I've also got some daytime footage to show you the quality of the lens and the quality of the recording. And I am absolutely blown away. They are absolutely fantastic. If you're night shooting and you do it regularly, you will know just how important it is to get good clear optics, especially when you're using the infrared. Now, a lot of these products like the NV100, the Night Fox that I used in the past, you have a fixed focal length. So I think it's something like four or five times base magnification. And then when you want to zoom in, you have to zoom in digitally after that. Now, when you zoom into an image digitally, it becomes very pixelated. With the 20 times optical zoom on this, you can really draw the image close to you and you can get a really nice, sharp image. If you want to drill in further to 24 times, which is four times digital zoom, simply zoom in using the menu on the top here. Now, I'm going to have a look at the menu system. Unfortunately, I can't record it directly on the device. So I'm going to put a camera to the back and we'll run quickly through the menu system. We'll have a look at the specs. We'll have a look at some footage that I've got out in the field. But before that, I just want to have a very quick look at the product itself. Now, you'll notice here on the top how there are six buttons. Very, very, very easy to use. Now, it's got finger marks in the side. Simply lie them across there. So when you're using it, you hold it up to your face. They are all perfect finger distance length and width apart. Even me with my fat digits. Quickly run down the top, we've got the power button. Now, Wildgarda have got this right. Press and hold for around about five seconds, it'll power on. Press and hold for around about five seconds, it will power off. That is a massive thing. Now, it doesn't sound much, but if you think, if you've got this in your bag and you accidentally press the power button, that will power on, and then the battery's gonna be drained while you're traveling to or around the site. Press and holding it for five seconds means that it doesn't accidentally get turned on. The menu button, we'll go through the menu stuff separately. We'll just do a quick run through and show you the basic menu items. Mode here lets you switch between camera, so stills. It lets you switch to video and it also switches across to the ability to review the footage that you have. Zoom, that's your digital zoom. Hit that and you can zoom in four times and you can loop all the way back to zero. Personally, I don't use the digital zoom. I use the optical zoom, which I'll show you here. Infrared levels, one, two, and three. Now that really does punched the infrared down, down way. I was looking around some barns, I was looking for some rats and I was scanning at a distance and I was scanning up close and I'll tell you what, that really, really performs well. And this is the shop button here, the OK button. You simply press that and that will take the photograph. The front of the unit here, you'll see it has see a lens cap on for the optical side of things. This is the infrared illuminator here. Just a simple twist, you can zoom near and far. So you can zoom in and out with that so you can really push the beam out or draw back. Here we have you, your zoom for your optical side. So you twist the top to get the distance from zero to 20 times magnification. And here where it says clarity adjustment here, this is actually your focus. And you can get pin, pin sharp accuracy with this. Absolutely beautiful. The unit itself is good, solid plastic. It's well built. And if you have a look at that, you can see just how well built that is. And it's got a nice soft silicon eyepiece, rubber eyepiece here, which when you hold that up to your face, it does hold off and keep in a lot of light within there, so you, it, you don't get a lot of light leak out. Along the side here, we've got the finger grips, and on this side here, we've got a little water resistant flip cover, and then you remove that, you've got mini HDMI, you've got your SD card and your USB. 
drop that back on there. In the back we have a tripod mount, four rubber feet so you can just place it nicely down on the tabletop and without scratching the table or scratching the unit itself. The battery compartment, you simply remove the cover here and these have got eight AA batteries, two, two lots, four on each side and they are in a stacked formation. Now, one thing you'll know and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this battery out and I'll show you something here because again this isn't something else I've sorted out very well. You see here we've got the flat spring terminals. In other devices I've used similar to this that have a stacked battery layout. What I've found is they have springs and when you're pushing the batteries in the springs bend or snap and then it's a real pain to get them fixed. With these being nice flat terminals you can simply push the battery in, clicks it over the top and they just fall in beautifully. You could change those batteries out in the field, no problem whatsoever. And if you notice what I've done is I've taken four batteries out, but if you look you can still see the unit is powered on. It will run off four batteries, it's not recommended because it does recommend that the eight batteries to run. But just if you are short and you are running low on batteries you can power it for a short time on four. Also in the side here where you've got the mini USB, sorry the USB-C adapter, you can plug in an external power bank. So if you've got that sitting on a tripod and you're using it as a spotter, then you can absolutely just have that sitting there on a power pack and just run it. You can see there the infrared illuminator. I'm just going to see if I can bump the infrared levels up and see if you can see that. It doesn't really show it that well in the camera, but you can see anyway on the right hand side there, that is the illuminator, the left side being the optics. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through the menu system and we'll have a little look at that and we will get some, have a look at the footage that I've got for the evening and have a look at the footage I've got for the day and then you can see for yourself just how good this product is. Now I'm not going to go into any massive in-length detail on this, I can't record it on the device itself so I'm using the camera, hence the quality. However, let's start. What we're going to do is press the menu button on the top we're going to be using the zoom, IR and shot buttons which correspond with up, down and OK for the menus. Let's hit the menu button, go in there, I'm not going to go into language, I think that's self-explanatory. And move down to image resolution, so you can see that's currently set to 5 megapixel. Press the OK button and I can choose between 2, 5 and 8. If I want to choose 8, I'll click the OK button and that puts an asterisk beside the 8 megapixel to tell me that that one there is selected. Hit the menu button to come back out. I'm going to go down to the next menu and we've got burst number. The burst number tells the unit how many photographs to take every time you snap the shot button. So if you have a look in there, you can see you take a single photograph, take two or three. Now I've got to set to two because if you've got a moving target and you take a photograph, it'll snap two pictures and hopefully you'll get a decent photograph from one. So that's the risk of two, that means it's saved at that. Press menu to come out. Scroll down to video length, currently this is set to no limit, but what I like about this is you can hit OK and you can go in and say record a maximum of 10 seconds, 30 seconds, all the way through to 2 minutes. This is especially useful if you're using it as a spotter and you're recording because you might spot something down range and you may want to go after it to take a shot. If you just put the unit down and you walk away, before you know it, you turn 15 minutes into a recording, eaten into your SD card. So what I will probably do here is, I will probably set mine to something like 2 minutes. But what I'm doing is, I'm leaving it on no limit because I am testing it at the moment. Sound recording on or off, self-explanatory. Now on, an, on a toggle menu like this, you simply hit the OK button to switch between the menus and you're done. And obviously that's recording the, the sound from the unit itself. Date and time setting, go down, hit OK, and you just press the OK button to cycle through all the date and time options, menu button to come out. Now the date and time stamp, you can have that on your footage, on your photographs, I've chosen to have that off. Date format, day, month, year, and you've got obviously year, month, day, day, month, year, month, day, year. Hit menu to come out of there. The display brightness, that is how bright the actual display is that you're looking into. I've got that set low because I don't want a lot of light leaking out when I'm using this at night. And we've got lamp auto off. Now I think this is the infrared illuminator. I've not been in this option to be honest. Let's have a little look. Three, five, ten minutes. So I'm assuming this is the illuminator. So if the illuminator is not used after say three minutes, it'll automatically switch it off. Um, or five minutes, whatever you set it at. Because that will ensure that you're not just burning the batteries. 
And what else have we got here? Auto off. This is really nice. I've had units in the past where you switch them on and they just stay on endlessly until the batteries are flat. You can have the unit automatically power off after, for example, as I have here, five minutes, which makes sure that if you do forget about it, you're going to conserve the batteries. So card cycle lets you rewrite over the up, everything on the card. So once you fill the SD card, it will automatically go back and rewrite. Format the card from there, default setup, and the version number. And that is essentially it. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit, to be honest. So super easy. It, I mean, I picked the menu up within just a couple of minutes when I'm out. But once I've configured everything on the menu, I didn't need to go back in. Okay, if we have a just a quick look at the mode button on the top. So if you look on the top left, you probably can't see it very well. But you can see it's got 8M beside it, 8 megapixel, and a camera icon. If I hit the mode button once it switches to a video icon so I can quickly in the field switch between taking photographs or video if I press it again it'll give me the option for playback so I can go into the video folders or into the into the photo folders let's go to video and I click OK I can then click OK on that one for example and it'll replay that footage for me press mode to come back mode to come back again and menu to come out when I went up to the farm to test the unit, I was switching between day and night mode. So this here is day mode with just the ambient light, the moonlight. But when I switch back to infrared, you'll hear a click. That is the infrared filter being put back across the lens. It's all automatic, nothing to think about, it just does it for you. The circle affair that you see on the cow's head here, kind of a spotlight effect, this is because the infrared illuminator is designed to throw light a long, long way downfield, 500 meters to be precise. So when you're up close, you get this spotlight effect. As I was walking around the farm, I spotted this little chap, this little rat sitting underneath his trailer. Now I'm 40 to 45 yards out here. I've got the unit on a tripod and I've zoomed right in. And you can see just how clear you can get the image. It was a very quiet, dark evening. So I pointed it up to the heavens. And this is a video of the stars that you can see there. Now on the right hand side of the image you'll see a dead rat up against the wall. He's obviously already taken a pellet from some of the shooting I was doing. But I'm about 30 yards out here, 25-30 yards out, and you can see just how clear you can get the footage. You can very quickly pan out, zoom out with the frontmost left lens, and then adjusting the clarifier as they call it, or the focus wheel behind that, you can get a nice crisp image. Very easy just to point and shoot, just to pan around. So you can see here, I'm about 40 yards out here. And what I'm doing is I'm just scanning around using that spotlight. And as I zoom into that, you'll see you zoom into the light. And look how clear that footage is. Like I said, this is on a tripod. So I'm moving it around on the top of the tripod. So it's a little bit juddery, as you'd expect when you zoomed in that far. And of course, you can very quickly zoom back out, adjust the focus, zoom back in, and adjust the focus again. Now this is all done from the leftmost lens of the unit. Very, very easy indeed. It's only two quick twists of a wheel, and you're done. For nighttime reconnaissance, observation, or hunting, you really will not be disappointed with this. The daytime footage is even better still. Shooting at a full 1080p, 30 frames per second, it's got a very, very quick refresh rate. There's no staggering, juddering or latency. And you'll see just how stable that image is when it's recorded. Quick zoom and the focus means you can very quickly pan around and zoom into a target area, get that in focus and get it recorded.
no glare on the lens. Good quality glass. It's got a nice color depth, very rich, vivid color, and great contrast. And you'll see this time and time again when you're looking at trees, when you're comparing the green of the leaves against the brown of the bark. And of course, when you're looking at wildlife, and you'll see the very vivid colors against the backdrop. I'm seriously impressed with this. I'm keeping these as part of my shooting kit and for my everyday outing and abouting with the kids.